Welcome back. This is Debbie with Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener, part two of this little bit of a tour and going through the garden and talking about a few things um, that's been going on. I'm feeling pretty good today. Got up really early, got out here in the garden, got some good sleep, even though it's really, really hot right now. Um, we're already probably in the 80s and it's only about 8 o'clock in the morning. It's supposed to be 97 today, possibly even hit 100. I know that in Fort Collins, which is about 45 minutes from us in Colorado, is going to be hitting 101 today. It was 97 there yesterday when we went there. Um, we popped over to see Trader Joe's and a couple other things while we were in Fort Collins. And uh, it was really, really stinking hot. You can see the pinwheel just uh, going on over here. It looks like a sunflower. And uh, ironically, we have sunflowers in here. And our eggplants, um, I don't know if the eggplants are going to do as much as I would hope that they would do. They look beautiful, but they're just not getting super huge. And it's probably because the soil temperature is a lot cooler than the air temperature. So I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do anything. I hope that they do. I hope we see some eggplants off of these, but we got another 45 days-ish of growing time, so I'm hoping that they really do something, um, anything at this point. And we actually have some fall planting that we're going to be doing of some cabbages and stuff. We'll get to that here in a moment. And then, of course, we've got the volunteer tomatillos that came up and are blooming like crazy. Tomatillos or ground cherry. They both look alike, so it's real hard to tell which is which until you actually start getting some fruit out of them. So they're blooming like crazy. They look wonderful. And uh, we've got two of those that came up over here. And I went ahead and staked them just to kind of notify me what's going on with them. But all of the sunflowers, we planted a shorter variety here around the edges. And in the center, we have a mammoth but they all look like they're going to start trying to, to bloom already so the mammoth is not going to get as super huge as I'd hoped it would but uh, nonetheless at least it won't shade out anything in here so that's a good thing and over here in the main garden our butternut squash are actually looking like they're putting runners on now finally they are just so so slow in comparison to the other squash that I have but uh, they're looking good got a little bit of a varig variegation I think on two of them and two of them look normal so who knows what the heck's going on with them <laughs> they look beautiful regardless they're nice and healthy so we'll see what they do and all of our beans we've got beans in there we need to pick um, but it's gonna be so hot today I'm not real sure I'm gonna get to that um, everything is producing except for of course the pole beans the pole beans are a little bit slower but they are getting runners on them now the rattlesnake pole beans and the Kentucky wonders and uh, the Japanese yard longs they're climbing the trellis they're doing what they're supposed to do the half runners are kind of beating everybody so we'll see we'll see if we get anything um, the Armenian cucumbers are absolutely loving the temperatures right now and have really put on some size in regards to when they were planted which is only a couple of weeks ago we got tomatillos that are setting on the tomatillo um, vines, if you want to call them, vines, plants. I don't really consider them like vines. They don't look to me like tomato plants at all to me. They have a different leaf pattern. I know that they're related, but to me, they have a different leaf pattern. They're a little bit more tender, um, tougher, but tender at the same time. Um, but they are, they're doing amazing. We did harvest the peppers off of the two pepper plants over here. And that seemed to really help them perk up a little bit because I think they were just putting so much effort into the couple of peppers they had on them. And this one especially was yellowing up and it did perk up and green up yesterday after I got those pulled off. So they are blooming again. So that's a good sign. They'll start putting on some peppers again. And they're getting a little bit bigger in size, which is good. They were um, one of the largest peppers that we got but then they just kind of stayed the same size so I think that they the garden center that I got them from because I only got a few peppers from a garden center just let them go too long in the containers but tomatoes are filling out like crazy if we of course we've got the old German the giant ox heart the super sauce tomatoes and the San Marzanos the San Marzanos in my opinion have done the worst of all of them and that's because three of them so far have shown up with blight 
which I've had to remove them. I got another one that looks like it's got blight right there. So I'm going to have to remove that one as well. And again, it's a San Marzano. All the others look fine. Not had any issues with them. It's just the San Marzano. So I think they're more prone to blight than some of the others are. I do have some San Marzano tomatoes that are set on the vines already. So um, the ones that are doing really well, which is like this one and that one, they've got fruit on them. The other ones that had the blight do not. And I had to take them out. I replanted some okra in their place. I put in some Clemson, um, Clemson spineless in here. So back in that area is a short row of Clemson spineless and you don't need a whole lot of okra plants to have a lot of produce. And they're about a 40 to 45 day uh, maturity. So I'm hoping that they come up and I hope that they catch on. If they don't, that's fine. But um, we'll see, but that is more of a sunny area through there. So they should be up in just a couple of days. The onions have really started putting some size on them. So really happy with that. And um, you can see that they're bulbing up very nicely in there. Will they get as big as they should? Probably not because we've only got 45-ish more days of grow time. Um, hopefully the weather holds off because we got such a late start in spring. I will hope that the weather holds off until the end of September, but who knows? Who knows what will happen? It is Cheyenne, Wyoming, so you just get whatever comes to you. And like I said, we have San Marzano. We got one plant over here that's kind of separated from everybody else. And it has tomatoes on it. Um, they kind of all have tomatoes on them. Just some of them are really small. The old German and giant ox heart, the plants are just getting massive. So those, we've had to keep tying up and everything. You can just see how much more massive they are. The super sauce kind of take the properties of aroma plants um, and only get about four and a half feet tall at the most. My experience, they've only been about three, three and a half feet tall, and that's about what they are this season. If I stretch them out, they probably would go to four feet. Um, some of them are, are just kind of bent and stuff like that because they had to stay inside for so long. But they are blooming and they are producing. I'm seeing little tomatoes on them, so I look forward to, to getting some tomatoes from them. Of course, we've got the Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes over here. They just now started blooming, so I'm hoping that they get something on them. I just wanted to have some orange tomatoes, but I don't know. I don't know if they will or not. You can see those there. One of them is still pretty small, but it is starting to come out of it and it's actually starting to get some blooms on it. And then this one over here is pretty tall. Um, they just haven't done as well as some of the other tomatoes that I've had. And I think it's just more of a warm, warmer weather variety. So um, I probably won't grow those again, but it was a nice experiment anyway. Um, if I do, I would grow them in containers. But we've got some tomato plants in here that are just looking massive. This one is an old German over here. And it is blooming and the plant is just huge. But I need to get in here with a bigger stake and get it staked up a little bit better. And uh, even the smaller tomato plants are catching up in size now. But everything looking fantastic. fantastic. We've got a royal burgundy bush beans back there behind everything and they're doing just fine they seem to not mind shade at all so hey people who have partial shade in your gardens like i do get the royal burgundy beans they look like they're going to take a little bit longer but they're blooming and they should have some beans here shortly and um, the contender beans i had not realized only take 40 days to get ready so that's why I'm getting beans so quickly on these, because I believe these are the contender. And um, next season, I probably will plant way more bush beans than I do pole beans. I'm, I'll probably have like one row of pole beans, but um, I don't think I'll try to have as many pole beans as I had this season and just go more for the bush variety, which seem to do a lot better in this climate and produce a lot quicker. So there is that. And our little patch over here with the roses and the comfrey and borage all doing great. I just watered the heck out of everything so it's all nice and perky right now. And our roses are just about done as far as blooming, I think. Um, we've got a couple of straggler blooms, but most of the blooms have 
went away and this one will bloom again the red one will bloom again probably in early September ish um, but just not as many blooms and then our peach one is blooming but this one took a beating this past winter so it's not looking fantastic um, it usually blooms a lot better so I think we need to do some more with it so I'm going to try to figure out what to do um, to get it back up and nice and healthy and uh, thicker than it was this year hanging pots are still just doing fantastic um, I don't really talk about them a whole lot because they're just <laughs> they're just here and still plenty of blooms in them they're still doing great we've got some black petunias in here um, that have just basically started and some celosia over here and it's really small but it's blooming and uh, we do have some blooms on our petunias up here and more celosia but everything looking great in there and we did get those roses transplanted um, I mentioned that on the last video but we did go ahead and get those in the clay pots and this is with the Schultz soil so we're gonna try to see if we can reuse that Schultz soil and so far they have really perked up and starting putting um, some more blooms on these are knockout roses and I think they're going to be red um, but they are putting on more blooms here's one getting ready to bloom right here um, and they were looking really rough when I got them I got them on clearance for five dollars just to have a couple more roses and have consistent blooming and get some rose hips off of them of course I'm gonna have to do some more research on them but they are blooming they're looking good and we got some calendula that has bloomed only a few so far and of course we still got the ones coming on behind here but I did also transplant calendula which did really well and hand out to people and um, they came and got all of those so I might go in here and thin out some more put them in some pots and hand out more calendula because they seem to be really popular peas are just exploding they are tolerating the heat because I keep watering them day and night I am watering them early in the morning and then watering them again late in the evening just to try to get them to stay cool and it's working um, so they are producing like crazy the vines look beautiful and healthy and nice and green and lush they have surpassed the trellises in size and are kind of trying to wrap back down now I think but um, just looking beautiful best best year of peas I've ever had I think even though my peas last season I had loads of them these are just doing so much better even than those um, and now I wish I had a couple of more trellises sets of trellises to have even more peas because we love peas here lettuce back there is doing great still need to pull out some of the mustard that has went to seed um, and that is something I would like to talk to some gardening companies about that put in lettuce seeds and of course I should collect my own lettuce seeds and then that would solve that problem but uh, the mustard goes to seed a lot faster than I've noticed that my lettuce does so if you have a blend like gourmet blend or masculine mix or something like that you end up with a whole lot of mustard and the mustard goes to seed before the lettuce does it's a pain in the butt so I would rather that not happen maybe they put less mustard in there or just none at all and just stick to lettuce actual lettuce and not um, mustard uh, red curry squash through here of course we got the two rows of red curry this is the one over past the peas they are massive plants now and taking off and running like crazy um, so they're getting into the peppers I'm gonna have to get in here and actually try to train them out of the peppers because I'm afraid they're gonna smother the pepper plants out um, so that is something that we need to do um, I see a weed I need to get in there pull out right there that has just gotten huge in size it actually might even be a sunflower I need to get in there and get that pulled out now I see a couple of them in two different areas so I need to get in there get those weeds out um, so they don't put pressure on the peppers but we do have peppers in here that are coming on um, there is one and we got blooms like crazy so the peppers have really started showing their true colors now getting a lot bigger 
need to get in here and tie some of them up because they're starting to get whipped around in the wind. Again, we've had the worst wind this season that we've ever had, even for Wyoming. Collards are getting kind of smothered out by squash, but they're still doing really well despite that. Um, so we'll have plenty of collards in here. I'm just going to let them get a lot bigger, thin some of them out, let the plants get a lot bigger. And our yellow straight neck squash are really putting some size on now as well. They're beginning to bloom, so looking forward to having some yellow straight neck squash soon. Again, we're a couple of weeks behind, um, even here for growing a whole lot of things. Squash took a long time to take hold before it finally did. And um, of course, we've got the, the big Bubba okra in here, which is a dwarf variety of okra. It um, is trying to do something, especially in this heat. It's definitely perked up, but it is slow. So I think the, the Clemson might have it beat as far as time um, to get it up and going. So that might be a thought um, for anyone that's thinking about getting that variety. They seem slow. This is our zucchini through here, the dark green zucchini. They are looking fantastic. Um, a couple of them are a little bit behind because it's more shaded there towards the back, but we do have some wonderful cabbages that are coming on back there that are heading up. Um, probably the best cabbages I've ever had as far as just the appearance of them. Um, just, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. And so is our celery. And we've been getting stalks off the celery and eating them and it is so flavorful in comparison with um, celery that you get in the store. And it is just, it's looking so beautiful and healthy and lots of nice stalks in there um, of some quality size. Um, they're not quite as big as the store bought, but um, as long as you're getting something, that's fantastic, especially because I only paid $1.99 for one pack of them and ended up with 15 plants. <laughs> and I actually could have separated them even more. There ended up being quite a few plants in each one, and I think each one of these has about two or three bunches of celery and each one and we've got 15 bunches so we're gonna have a lot of celery cauliflower still doing the thing that cauliflower does taking a long time as it usually does the broccoli is at the point where it wants to try to set some heads we'll see if that happens in the next bit um, we've got more broccoli that we have planted for the fall season. I don't know if we'll have enough time, but um, they're definitely getting a lot bigger and we need to get those set out. Um, so hopefully these produce pretty soon so we can just put them in the place of these broccoli. Our other cabbages are catching up now that we're slightly behind and I did transplant some more red cabbages that you can see some little guys right there to fill in where we lost some cabbages. Um, I just went ahead and planted those basically over here at the ends of our carrot rows and they got ready so quick to be transplanted over here and they are doing wonderful. So we'll see what the 97 degree temperatures will do to them today. They might kill them, but um, they've been transplanted a couple days so they've already gotten established. So hopefully they'll be just fine. But um, we did end up with six of those and got them transplanted over in here. And so far they are doing really well. Of course, we got our potatoes over here. These are the Yukon Gold. All the blooms are now gone. So it's a couple of weeks after the blooming finishes that you have potatoes that you could probably harvest. But I will wait and let these sort of uh, vines start dying back before I start digging the potatoes because we don't have a whole lot of ground pests to worry about. Um, so we'll just leave those in until we're ready to harvest. Only a few blooms remaining now. And I think we've got one, one potato that was slightly behind the others is just now starting to bloom. But otherwise, all of the blooms are pretty much done. And it looks like we will have some cabbages. So that is fantastic. We've got the fairy round dutch through here. Some of them are just, just now starting to get their heads. The fairy round dutch is a little bit slower. So we should get some cabbages out of these. And this was my own seed. So they're a little bit behind these guys, which I got at Menards. I just ended up with six of those cabbages. So um, 
they'll be a little behind, but that's good. We'll have a, start, a staggered harvest. But um, all the plants over here along the fence still doing really well. We've got our thyme and our another one of our roses. And we've got the compact basil over here hanging on the fence. I went in and thinned a lot of these out. I need to do a little bit more thinning. But that really prompted them to put on their second set of leaves. So we should have some basil out of these guys. You see one right here getting a little bit bigger. But I need to come in here and thin some more of these out just so they have room. Fuchsia still blooming like crazy. Basil going to seed. And we have our delicata squash through here that are really starting to pick up on size now. So I hope we'll get some delicata squash out of these guys. Um, and of course we got our tarragon over here. I think there's only one plant remaining. Seems about the going rate these for the tarragon. And our beans over here are starting to leaf out again. So we should get some beans out of these guys. It just will be a little bit slower than the others. And we still have watercress, by the way, even in these temperatures. I keep my watercress over here in just this container. And we have plenty in there for all of us. And we've got some lavender lady over here. And so these lavender, there's a few of them in there. Um, they'll continue to grow on. Oh, it is getting so hot now. I'm trying to keep the phone out of the heat. So again, we have more zinnias through here and sunflowers, shorter variety, and then the older sunflowers. We're just kind of trying to stagger the growth on these guys so we get some more blooms throughout the season. And then more sunflowers and zinnias and marigolds over here. We still have one spearmint plant in the spearmint container only the one and our mints are still doing really well and we probably need to get these transplanted out because these containers are just not enough to hold them anymore um, i have considered putting them in ground um, in a shaded area like over there where i had the bok choy and just let them let them go let them see what they can do but they're still looking healthy and then we have our marjoram down there and it's filled out the container completely. And we've got some more marjoram over here to transplant, as well as some more Greek oregano and some other things in here. And it looks like we've got a purslane coming up in this. And then of course our hanging pots over here still looking fantastic. Even our coleus in this heat. And the rhubarb is surviving the heat just because we keep coming in here and watering it and cooling it off. And our Swiss chard, I got that thinned out and got them kind of um, a little bit deeper in the soil and just kind of mounded the soil up around each one. And we've got some more seeds in there planted in the back section, so we'll have some more come up. This is a rainbow Swiss chard mix, and they are looking really good. So we're, we're hoping to get some Swiss chard out of these guys. And then we have some more acorn squash over here. I think these are acorn squash that I planted and we've got five of those guys and they are starting to get a little bit bigger i don't know if they'll have enough time but i hope that they will and we've got our pumpkins over here still looking fantastic we've got the white pumpkins and we've got the pumpkins that i've been growing for six years and the boston marrow everyone has runners kind of just intertangling on each other um, i don't mind if they cross doesn't bother me at all. Um, it won't show up this season anyway. It would show up next season. And I don't really care. It's still a squash and it's still going to be edible and still going to be good. So we've got these guys. I accidentally broke the uh, runner on this guy just trying to train it back and it just popped. So unfortunately we have a blemish on that one, but it did go ahead and start another runner as you can see on the other side. So it'll be fine. Just, uh, just puts it a little bit behind a couple of days, but it'll catch up very, very, very quickly. And we do have some blooms on them. It's just down underneath those leaves. You can see another runner here. Trying to keep it to going back that way, not this way, but you know, it happens. Lots of beets in there and rutabaga, all looking fantastic. And all of our potted plants still looking amazing. And then we're now getting some of the dinosaur kale catching up in size and um, I think we ended up with like 15 plants that'll be plenty 
Um, I may come in here and actually transplant them to where they're more um, spaced out so that way they can really come on. We got a couple of celery in here, the Utah celery, and it seems to be doing all right. We've got some new leaves on it, so we'll see if that does anything. And our turnips are still doing really good. Um, we've got plenty of lettuce. It still hasn't went to bolt, so that's good. So I'll have plenty of lettuce to harvest from. I need to plant some more back there. Um, had a tough time this season with planting back in that area for some reason. I'm not real sure what's going on with that, but maybe I'll need to throw a little bit more compost in here. And carrots still looking really good. And we've got some parsnips in there that are just now starting to come up. And we've got some daikon radish over in the back section there. They are really starting to put size on now. I didn't realize that they grow so quickly or I would have done so sooner. Um, so next season I might actually have another mound of just daikon radish. This was an experiment. So I think we've got like 20 or so plants in there. But if you know daikon radish, they get really super huge. Um, so um, 20 of them is plenty enough for us. And we have our carrots in here. I did thin them out. So they have really started to bush out now. Um, because they've had room to grow and then we've got more carrots planted in there but they seem to come up and then kind of die off and I don't know if it's the heat um, some of them have survived you can see some really new guys right there um, and some are still just now coming up so these are red giant carrots and Parisian carrots as well as a da daikon radish and then over here we have Danvers rainbow mix and some more red giant carrots and um, Oh gosh, we had a shin corota as well, is in, in both beds. And then of course the parsnips on the outer side. So lots of that going on. But here's another look at the garden. The garden's looking amazing this year. It's just, it's just been slow with um, soil temperatures being cooler even though the temperatures outside have been hot. And we found out that from the university. The university had been doing some soil temperature measurements and I have as well the soil temperatures have just been cool in comparison with the heat that we have outside so it's an interesting issue of course here's our lilies blooming and I do have a surprise we do have one of the black lilies that is open right now it's still very dark red like I said when they first bloom they're very dark red and then they start turning more black a little bit later anyway red lilies and I think we've got some white ones that are getting ready to bloom we've got our orange purple ones right here and we've got yellow ones all kinds of colors this is one of the black ones that turns really dark red as you can see blooms and it's dark red for a little bit and then starts turning black another one of our black ones here of course we've got some sunflowers mixed in here in a couple of places and I need to get in here and get the thistle out there's thistle the Guido Cossuman squash is over here and starting to get a lot bigger now, so it did pull out of whatever issue that it had going on. So hopefully we'll get some Guido Cossuman squash. And again, that was thanks to Sandy from Suburban Homesteader, Wyoming slash Arizona. And we've got a French pie pumpkin over here. The one didn't come up over here right in front of the tag. But this one did come up we had two mounds and this one is up and going and we have one over here that just basically got started we got some acorn squash over here that i need to thin out a little bit and then our big max pumpkins back there again that's thanks to sandy from suburban homesteader wyoming slash arizona um, as well as the french pie pumpkins and we've got a cucumber in here mixed in with our strawberries and it seems to be growing quite well getting some runners on it um, so it's going to be interesting I'm probably going to have to pull the cage off which gives my strawberries um, squirrels access to my strawberries which is something that happened the reason I put the cage on this one I haven't had that issue with the other one at all um, so maybe they've stopped bothering it so I might pull this off and give it a test run just to see, but we've got runners on the strawberries that are beginning to um, root in. So those will be going. And then of course we've got another set of acorn squash over here. 
and here is one of the black lilies and as you can see it's really dark red but you can see also that you can see the black at the edging when it gets it's only been bloomed for about a half a day so once it it takes a little bit longer it will turn completely black so we've got looks like a mite on that one that is bad so let me see nope nope it was just a bead of some nectar so looking great so is our rhododendron that was struggling it is looking fine and we need to get in here and weed it we got weeds coming up like crazy now so like subscribe hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out and uh, we shall see you in the next one.